So what I was in was what I had found out. Mm -hmm. But I knew at the same time that there were two different things, so I had to give one out and accept the other one. Right. So one day I found myself just asking God, the Creator, Allah, to guide me. I wanted to serve Him. I knew that I wanted to, to enjoy this, this purpose in life. And I found myself uh, crying. I was desperate and I found myself asking for the right guidance. But like I said, even though I knew the guidance was for Islam, I did not want to know from there. So I was at one day um, just praying, crying, surrendering, and asking Allah, the Lord, the Creator, to show me within the Bible, which I believe to be the truth at that time, the truth that I needed to follow. I just wanted to serve as it was my moment of surrender. It was the moment in which I said, this is it. I can't take it anymore. I want to serve you. Just tell me how and uh, show, me, show it to me here. This is your word to you. It has been your word. Just show it to me. Mm -hmm. And uh, um, soon enough, I opened my, my Bible, which I still possess, and I found the answer. I found the answer there in which it described that God is one and we are to worship Him and, and be grateful to Him and to follow His word and His commandments. And that was the moment in which I said, I finally found peace in my heart, I finally found the way to my path. And it has been a wonderful journey. So I am grateful for that. Inshallah. Thank you. Beautiful story, Mashallah. Mm -hmm. And uh, do you regret of what you did since then? Did you think about going back to Christianity or something? No, I would never. I would never ever want to be in the dark. I want to be where I am. Alhamdulillah. How do you see your life right now compared to the old life that you were? Do you see any kind of difference that happened to you? Definitely. I think that life after becoming Muslim became more meaningful to me. It came clearer. I can see and appreciate things that I never did before. Um, I have developed a special love for God, for His creation, for His favors, right. for people that He sent, such as the prophets, Prophet Abraham, Prophet Moses, oh, Prophet sure. Job, all those people, uh, Jacob and uh, Prophet uh, Jesus, Alayhi Wasallam. And I didn't feel that before. Right. I, and becoming Muslim has definitely filled up my heart and, like I said, it has given meaning and purpose to my life. Now I know what I do things and where I want to go. Like you often hear well, there is hell and there is heaven. Now I know I can make a choice or where I want to go and how and what I need to do to get there. And no matter how you know, it difficult it may seem at times, mm -hmm. the reward is far beyond your imagination. It's, it's far beyond what you go through. Mm -hmm. And I'll give you an example. When I first became Muslim, the first six months it was very hard for me to wear hijab because it was hot. I was not used to the weather. And I remember sitting one time at the porch in my mother's house with my sister. She was wearing shorts and a short sleeve shirt as well. And I was in my full attire. And yes, we both were very hot. And I recall her saying, oh, I'm so hot. This weather is like 90 degrees. And I remember tell, uh, I was just looking at her and thinking, comparing both of us. And I said, you know, I am covered and I am very hot as well, but I have a purpose. I know what I'm doing this. Mm -hmm. And I tell you, you now, this is a reward for me. I'm pleasing my Lord by being like this, by withstanding this weather. And look, and I told my sister, this is my sister, you know, I have a good relationship. And I said, look at you. You are uncovered, displeasing, and you're still burning hot. Mm -hmm. You see, everything is a purpose. I say, I have a purpose with this. What is your purpose with this? Right. So, it, you know, it has definitely let me see these things. It has made me stronger. I think I'm more patient and I, I think I'm more positive. I have a purpose in life. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. Now, we know that you make dawah. <laughs> I do. Yes, I want to hear a little bit about your dawah. Do you have, uh, tell me about, um, you know, your calling to Islam and if you have any kind of story you would like to share with us about your about things dawah. that you do for dawah. Well, um, the way we have tried to call others to Islam has been through um, definitely talking to them, uh, starting with family or close friends, mm -hmm. and it's going as far as public, like right. television or uh, radio, mm -hmm. newspapers, Media. and programs, meetings. And mm -hmm. 
I think that one of the things that we use also is the example, um, especially with family, when you are uh, standing in your, mm, in your beliefs, when you are kind to them, when they see that you actually a, a better person, that's right. a very good way for that one. And you want to reflect that for other people mm -hmm. as well. And it, it, that's one of the things that we have done. Um, other than that, I guess it would be, like I said, through media or through other organizations and programs. And we call to people to come to learn and to benefit from this light, from this guidance. Right. MashaAllah, now I, I see that you are so outgoing, outstanding uh, uh, woman in, in our Muslim society here Thank in you. Dallas. Uh, I want to ask you about when you first <coughs> became Muslim, how was uh, the reaction of your friends and your parents, pretty much? Well, I th mm, the reaction from my parents was positive, mm -hmm. same as my siblings. Mm -hmm. um, with friends, it was a little different. I think that... Um, I lost a couple of friends per se because they were dear to me, mm -hmm. but at the same time I think that if they would have been my real friends, they would have understand mm -hmm. and appreciate my change. Right. So yeah. what I gain is far beyond that. Mm -hmm. So it's okay with me. My family has been very supportive. My sisters uh, are very supportive with me. I have three sisters and Are my mother. No, my mother is, mashallah, start, studying. She likes Shalom. Islam a lot. Yeah, like I, I think she's very close. And my sister is halfway there. <laughs> but May Allah guide them. To yes, the we know they struggle, so she's there. She's but there. they support me a lot, so it's... Yeah. Uh, the last question I want to ask you, what would you give a message to the world? Hmm, that's a very good question. <laughs> the same um, Muslims first. I would say... <laughs> Following the example of the last messenger, Muhammad, Muhammad peace be upon him, yeah. I would tell people that there is only one God mm -hmm. and that Muhammad is his messenger and that the call we have to them is the call of peace, the call of truth, mm -hmm. and the, the call to meaning and purpose in life. And I would say that they, if they can only take one minute to think where they're going, if they were to die right now, where are they going? Right. That's that would be one thing. And the other one would be to, to be open and to read into what they're being taught. Mm. Is it what they're getting the truth? Or is it just being told to them by someone who thinks is the truth or maybe has uh, formed it in a way that it looks like the truth? I would advise them to use their mind, to use their senses, to read, to find themselves the truth of what is for them. And um, like we say, you know, sometimes people can teach us something they have learned and they have been doing for a long time. Right. But that does not necessarily mean that that is the right thing, just because people have been doing it. And I think they should look for what they think is good for them, what is right for them. And look for the truth. Don't settle for what they say. If you want to know about Islam, ask the Muslims. They are the Muslims. If I want to learn about Christianity, I'm going to go with the Christians. And uh, like, That's a good one. Yeah. It's a, it's, it's, I think it's very important. And look at it this way, in other words, if you were to be sick, you go to the doctor mm -hmm. because he knows about diseases. He knows about ailments. He knows the medicine for that. Mm -hmm. It would not make sense that you are sick and you go to a vet or you go to a teacher mm -hmm. because they won't have the remedy for you. They don't know that. Right. So, in other words, it doesn't make sense that if you are a Christian or a Muslim or whatever faith, you go to the wrong source for information. Right. In, in short, if you are a Christian and you want to know about Islam, ask a Muslim. And if you're a Muslim and you want to know about Christianity, go and ask a Christian. Jazakallah khair. Thank you so much, sister, for your, you. uh, your dawah. Thank you. I appreciate it. Thank you.